um, we would like to be asked questions because we had uh, like in, in previous events people that just like stood up for five minutes and didn't have a question like they, they talked for five minutes and didn't have a question uh, so we would really appreciate that um, and uh, in order to get as many questions as we want so we prefer that you say this question to one of the panelists or one of the panelists only will answer your question um, okay Yala. Uh, what do you think about the Arab party in Israel, the, in the parliament, one of you? It's really a really good question. <laughs> the, you know, the Arab members of the Knesset, they choice by people, by citizens that they choose them. But I myself, mm. uh, I don't think that they doing their work well and their job well because uh, I don't need a person that uh, that represent the Hamas or represent the Palestinian people and don't represent me. Uh, we are citizens in Israel and they have to work about on the the the, Israel, the Arab Israeli uh, problems and issues. And uh, I think that, you know, they, the, all, all the people looking for waiting, looking for uh, how to, to, to choice another time, and again and again, I think that they looking for that, and they don't want, uh, don't want to, do, to do anything else. Uh, this is my, 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 my mind, okay? Uh, Uh, many Arabs in Israel, they they choosing uh, Zionist uh, parties. And uh, the Arab culture, you know, they, they, they have uh, deals with the, the par Arab parties. They, you know, the, the Arab parties come to the ahead of the tribe, ahead of the family, and they made a, making a deal with them, and the, all the, 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 the family will choose this party. And... Uh, what I think is they don't uh, doing well for the people or for the Arab community that choice them. So you brought up the word, so you said that a lot of uh, Arabs in Israel vote for Zionist parties. So a lot of people in the United States are misinformed about Zionism and think that it's some sort of racist uh, ideology, would you consider yourself a Zionist, any of you, and what, why do you, do you believe that it's not a racist ideology? I, I want to say I never defined myself Zionist, but I respect the Zionism because, because the Zionist, I live in the most democracy state in the world, because the Zionist, the Zionism, I live in the, the most beautiful country in the world, and I respect the Zionism that made a country on the democracy, democracy basis and uh, a, a nation, a greatest nation that uh, now all the world uh, learned from, from it. Well, to begin with, um, I think us as citizens, we're going to accept any agreement that uh, the Israeli uh, side agrees with the Palestinian side, uh, no matter what agreement uh, there will be. But our main problem today, uh, as we see it, is that there is a lot of incitement inside of the Palestinian Authority, especially from Hamas part. 
And um, this issue today, we feel that we need to change. Um, when we that when we went to college campuses here and we were yelled at to free Palestine, and I told them yes, free Palestine, but free Palestine from incitement, free Palestine from uh, from the terror uh, attacks against the Jewish people, uh, free Palestine from their own leadership that uh, doesn't really care about their own situation. Uh, people are starving. They get a lot of aid from Israel, but their leaders are living in multi mansions. Uh, uh, like Mahmoud Abbas, you know that he have uh, a huge castle in the West Bank that is surrounded uh, by a huge fence. It's not a fence, actually, it's a wall. Uh, and he's separated from his own people. Do you think uh, if Israel gave Palestine the land that they desire, do you think they would stop there? Do you think that would be <laughs> What's the question? I want you to go, to go back to the history and... Uh, to 1936, 1947, and uh, to the all uh, Israeli offer to peace with the Palestinian people. All the time, who has uh, refused this uh, offer offers was the Palestinian people. And uh, Ehud Olmert and Ehud Barak gave them, uh, I think, in 98% uh, from, uh, from the West Bank, and uh, he, he was uh, ready to, to exchange uh, lands with them and the Palestinian people refused it. Yasser Arafat refused it, and Mahmoud Abbas with Olmert refused it. I think that uh, the Palestinian people don't want, not the Palestinian people, the Palestinian people, yes, want, to, 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 yes, yes, want to peace, but the Palestinian leadership and the organization, Palestinian organization don't want uh, peace because they loved the, the definition victims in the world. And all the world and all the organization donate, donate for them money. And they want to steal victims in the world eyes to get money and the, their people to stay a poor and uh, without what, uh, what to, to eat and what, uh, what to do. Thank you so much for your question. It's a very important question that have a lot of parts to answer it. So, first of all, I walk all the time proudly and my head is up. My country is Israel and I'm proud of this country. Um, if you ask about uh, if there's lots of women like me, I believe there's lots of women who think and want to have their own decisions and freedom, such as like me, but some of them afraid to talk, or some of them do it on their uh, work. Like we have lots of women, Arabs, Muslims women, who involved in the uh, careers in the very high position and very high educated women. We have teachers, lawyers, we have a member of Knesset, we have a doctors, we have a managers, a lot of Arabs managers bank, we have very high position. So the country give us as a minority the opportunity to involve in a very high career and to have a very high educated to move this nation to the successful direction. 
Hanin Zohabi is not representing all the Arabs or the minority Arabs in Israel. And not all of the Arabs go and vote for Arabs um, uh, par parla parliaments or part on the parliament. There are lots of Arabs and minorities who go and vote to another uh, part. So not definitely she represents all of the Arabs or all of the minorities. So um, is there any part of the question? Okay. Today I'm living actually on the north because I, I got married. And my husband, he's Muslim. He's not Bedouin. He's Muslim. And he did military. And why I say that? Because Bedouin, uh, most of them or all of them do military. But not all of the Muslims do or have to do military. So my husband did military. And it's not, uh, uh, you know, um, common in the uh, village. I live now in the village. I, 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 yeah, I, <laughs> I go from a city to a village. But in a nice, <laughs> in a nice view, you know, it's in the north. And let me be honest with you, not all of them uh, like the way or the ideology or, or what I'm doing or what I'm thinking. But I believe, I believe that I will never give up for the truth. And I will never give up and nobody can break me because I'm doing the right thing for the, and, and speaking to the right people about my experience, about the truth of my Israel and, and, uh, and my country. So they will not broke me, up, broke me down. And it starts from what, wh wh while I was a young girl, while I was younger, from the 14 years old. Do you know what... Uh, 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 the, not my family, the, 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 my, my relatives and my neighbors say to my father when he decided uh, that I'm going to uh, study alone and live alone in England, they did the revolution. <laughs> revolution. Because they don't send their, their, their boys, the, the male. So can you send your... your uh, on, uh, yeah, your own girl. And I came back with three certificates successfully. And they was looking like that. Then I volunteer in the police and wearing the uniform and, 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 and going uh, uh, with, a, with a car, a police car in Kalanswa inside the city. And they was looking like that. So they used to see me in what who I am today. And now, and tomorrow, and the future, I think when, when my uh, a nation, or the Muslims, Arab women, and, and uh, men hear me, they maybe will have some hope and some courage to stand hand in hand and to build a new good nation in our country with the Jewish people. Thank you. Really, we have uh, problems and issues with the Bedouins in the south, but we have to separate between the, our duty as citizens that living in a state and between uh, issues between a minority group and the government. Issues between minority groups and the government is in everywhere, in the states, in Europe, and everywhere. And uh, the problem with the Bedouins in the south is with the unrecognized uh, village, and uh, this is 
a long time ago and uh, <coughs> you know the, the media using this 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 uh, situation is many times but the, the, the reality is not how is the media show it uh, I, I, I know uh, one person that uh, get and one day get uh, two Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he got the demolition, uh, he got an order. And the demolition order, and he got in the same word in Hebrew also to go to the to the reserve, you know, so you get and do you, from the government. And do you know what, what he decided to do? To go and to fight. With the, with the, with their unit and with the uh, with the IDF. Uh, Money, the, the Bedouins get money offers from the, 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 from the government in Israel. And I, I, I have to say that the, the, the problem is from the both sides, not only from the government. From the Bedouin too, because they want, you know, want to take the all lands. And the Bedouins, they are nomadic. They come, came from another uh, land and want to, to, to take this land. And this... We, in, in, the, the, in, the, in the center of 21, it's not walk. Then uh, I think, and I, I think that we will get to, a, to, to fix it, the, these problems. And this is maybe one in one year that you will hear about one, uh, one, uh, one house that destroying, and I want to destroy any house is an, uh, illegally, uh, illegally, sorry. And if this was my house, because this is the legal who is will do do order. That's it. Thank you. So it seems like you're you all four of you are all citizens of Israel. Right? Of course. So I'm I'm curious as to the experience of being not a citizen, um, either in Israel or in the West. Because it seems like you're, you guys have a nice experience, but you're living as privileged as citizens in Israel. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you guys have insight as to what their daily experience is like. I think that you should to ask this question to the uh, Palestinian government. No, how? no I just, I'm just asking, curious. Because I hear, you know, I hear, on campus here, uh -huh. I hear things all the time, like, they don't have electricity for like six, seven hours a day. And I just don't know if it's true. I, I don't know. So I... Want to know what you guys think about it? Well, like they don't have running water. I hear like three, no. four hours out of the day. Um, like you said, when you're in the army, when you're in uh, an, a combat unit, you go from line, from border to border and serve there a few months. Uh, one of my my uh, time was in Hebron. That's uh, in the how do you say Hebron in English? Okay, thank you. And when you're there, you see a lot of people who, a lot of kids, mostly kids, who are the problem in, in, the, in the place. Why? Because the, the people who live in, in the place just want peace. They don't want anything else. They have electricity. They have water. They have the government, not the Israeli government. The Israeli government, I don't know what they do in specific places. But most of the lands, the Palestinian lands, are uh, supported by the Palestinian Authority and not by the Israeli support. The Israeli government just aids them, give them aid, give them money, give them water. They give them the water. They give them the, the electricity sometimes just for them so they could live. And as he said, there's 150,000 of people who come from outside of Israel illegally to work inside and the government knows that and they don't do anything because they want people to live freely but what can you do when people doesn't want that so much just, just to add on what uh, Ram said um, you mentioned the electricity thing you know uh, the electricity that goes to Gaza is from our the four of us and all the Israelis taxpayers. And you know what happened in uh, the protective edge war in 2014? A rocket was fired by Hamas 
and it hit the electricity uh, building that were moving electricity into Gaza. And you know what happened during the middle of the war? The people from the electricity company, they went and fixed that uh, uh, building that was hit. While there are rockets firing from Hamas uh, into the area of uh, where the building is. This is how the situation is. Israel never stopped by itself uh, uh, this uh, issue. And you can see there is a live stream online of trucks every day, hundreds of trucks that goes with supplies and with food and with aid uh, to the Gaza Strip. But what we found out after that, that they built tunnels with it to help and uh, uh, make people uh, do terror attacks inside of Israel. That's how uh, uh, most of the horrific terror attacks that happened that butchered children and, and whole families in their houses. Uh, this is, this is uh, the whole situation that you can, we can't, even us living there, we can't understand only with one, with only one thing that uh, anyone says. And that's why you need to question everything that anyone says to you anywhere. Even now, after you, you heard everything we said, Go and check it up. Don't take everything we said as granted. Because it's your job to check that facts and to see and decide what do you want to know. And we are here to give you this platform and to give you the information that we have as citizens in Israel. But your job is to use that, take it, question it, and then decide what to do with it. Thank you. Thank you. I want just to add a very important thing. Um, first of all, I, and as, as all of you here, want peace, but when the Palestinian uh, uh, government recognized as Israel, as a country, as a Jewish and democracy country, then maybe we will have our government with their government negotiation to peace. But do you know what the problem? If you hear um, the media, just before one week, the Palestinian government, Mahmoud Abbas, did a peace agreement with Hamas. Had you heard about that? Yeah. Before one week. The problem that they are inside each other, divided. Fatah against Hamas, Hamas against Abu Mazen, Abu Mazen against that, that against that. This is Sunni, this is Shia, this is the, don't talk to him, and this is, and all of them against each other. It's unbelievable. So when they have agreement to agree, then we'll come and talk to our government to agree for agree agreement to agree for peace. <laughs> peace start from us. Thank you. So we're gonna have our last question. Uh, yes, uh, turn it back. Oh, okay. Thank you. So do you think speaking on the subject of peace? Do you think if Israel gave up all that land and signed some piece of paper with the Palestinian government that there would be lasting peace? And also, what in, a, in some kind of Palestinian Authority government, how much suffering would there be for the people who are actually peaceful and reasonable and who really, really want peace and who really just want to live their lives? Um, I think, huh? No, I understand your question. I'm just taking a minute to think uh, of an answer. Uh, eventually, what, what is going on is that under this circumstances, as Dima said, they, among themselves, they can't agree on what the agreement should be. Uh, the Hamas, uh, they, they just like released a few months ago that they don't seek the destruction of Israel, but they still don't recognize Israel as a country. For the Jewish people, so what does that mean if they don't uh, 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 believe in that? Uh, uh, how can they do an agreement with a country that do, they don't agree with? Uh, and the thing is that what they're doing time after time and after time is only to use the media and use their own people in order uh, uh, to go against Israel, against the Jewish uh, uh, people, against even the United States, because they don't really care about their people. They don't really care about peace. They just want the money to keep rolling. 
That's what is going on throughout the last 70 years. Because if they wanted something different, they would have changed the path uh, a long time ago. Um, so we want to thank you again uh, for coming and hosting us here. I want to thank uh, SSI chapter uh, here at UCLA. Uh, we had a great time with you guys, and uh, I hope that we will meet you in the future in Israel. You have now four friends in four different uh, cities and villages in Israel. So uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter under Reservists on Duty. And you can uh, see this is our fifth, I think, fifth event, sixth. This is our sixth event out of uh, 16 in total of two weeks. Uh, tour that we're having. Uh, after that, we're going to San Diego, Arizona, Minnesota, Philadelphia, and New York. Uh, we're expecting a long tour. So thank you for coming, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you, everybody. Please, one last big round of applause for Reserve Sun Duty.